For nearly four decades, Master Blues harmonica player and Chicago native Corky Siegel has been entertaining audiences. Blues lovers will immediately recognize him as the front man for the legendary Siegel Schwal Band that played regularly at Chicago blues clubs in the 60s and 70s. They also toured internationally. I sat down to talk to Corky Siegel at one of his favorite Chicago venues, one he's both performed at and supported for many years, the Old Town School of Folk Music. Corky, where did your love of the blues come from? I was listening to all the records in, in the, the, that we heard in the 50s, all the radio stations that played. And they played Jimmy Durante, they played Mahalia Jackson, and they played all the country music and jazz, Louis Armstrong, and they played uh, even some R&B, you know, the early Fats Domino and all those things. And, and it, Rosemary Clooney, I mean, just anyone you could think of, and very eclectic. And all that music was music that was rooted in the blues. When I finally heard the blues, I felt like I was home. I was learning to play the harmonica when I was uh, uh, about 21 years old, 20, 21. 1964, I'm just taking a guess. And a neighbor heard me and brought over Holland Wolf, Muddy Waters, and Jimmy Reed, and I listened to those records and I completely fell in love. Subconsciously, you know, even though I love the music and I love the culture, but I think, you know, my, my parents, they always told me this is a free country and, you know, we treat everyone equally. And when I saw that that wasn't the case, I think I sort of wanted to join the good side. So I ended up, you know, hanging out in all the black clubs in Chicago and playing music, which is, I think, a lot of other kids did, too. <laughs> when you first started playing blues in the 60s, what was the scene like on the South Side? Very early on, when I started playing these bars, one of the places I walked into was a place called Pepper Show Lounge, and I walked in there with my partner, Jim Schwal, and he was playing guitar. And we walked in, and we were just trying to find places to play. We just wanted to play music. You know, we had no ambitions other than to play music. Uh, so we walked into Pepper's, and Johnny Pepper saw us and said, you know, I'd like to hire you for Thursday nights to be the house band, part of the house band. So he hired a bass player and a drummer for us, which were usually famous people off the back of the records that I had. And uh, then first night we played, you know, Howlin' Wolf shows up and sits in with us. Little Walter sits in. And another night, uh, Willie Dixon. She look me in the eyes and say, if it th th thing's all right, I get n -n nervous. Muddy Waters. <laughs> Then the young guys like Buddy Guy and, and Junior Wells and James Cotton. So here we are, you know, young kids who, who were head over heels in love with the blues. And here we are, you know, getting to play from, you know, 9 o'clock at night till 2 in the morning, sometimes later, with all these guys, these famous people, these amazing blues masters sitting in with us night after night. One of your great collaborators is Seiji Asawa, the renowned conductor. How did that relationship with him begin? We start playing a place in Chicago called Big John's and uh, all of a sudden this Japanese fellow starts showing up to the club night after night and one night he comes up to me and he says, Corky, I'd like your band, Siegel Schwal, to jam with my band. And as it turns out his band was the Chicago Symphony. It was a great success. We went out to perform at the New York Philharmonic and the Boston Symphony and we got invitations all over the world. Tonight, from the Champagne and Flowers of Symphony Hall in Boston, it's Evening at Pops with Arthur Fiedler, Boston Pops Orchestra, and tonight's special guest, the Siegel Schwal Blues Band. Boston's grand man of music, Arthur Fiedler, and special guest, the Siegel Schwal Blues Band from Chicago, together on Evening at Pops. <laughs> Siegel Schwal disbanded in 1974. Jim Schwal went on to earn a doctorate in music and became a successful photographer. He was also politically active and ran for mayor of Madison, Wisconsin. Corky Siegel remained committed to the blues. Sage used to say to me, Corky, you must pursue this, this juxtaposition of blues and classical. 
It's very important for the world. It's important for the world of music, and it brings people together. It's very important. You should do this. But when Seiji Ozawa first proposed this idea of this fusion, for want of a better term, between blues and classical, what was your reaction to it? Yes, which is pretty much my reaction to everything. <laughs> Just say yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes, you know, you know I, I guess it was an artistic inclination, and I'm, I was fortunate to have that, <laughs> rather than thinking, hmm, that's going to be weird. You know, I just went, hey, yes. He's had a passion for marrying these two musical styles ever since, composing and performing as a soloist for orchestras throughout the world. In 1983, Siegel took another creative chance, forming a new band dedicated to performing his unique blend of blues and classical. Chamber Blues features Corky's blues harmonica alongside a classical string quartet. The challenge is to write from the heart, and, and that's my greatest inspiration, is just finding out what do I have to offer. And it's not always so easy to do that, you know, with all the pressures and what people expect. So I try and just find out what is it I really want to do, what is it I really want to express, and I should just do that. And it takes a little bit of fearlessness to do that, you know, but, but that's the joy of, of being an artist. Corky Siegel's pioneering spirit shows no sign of slowing down. The Siegel Schwal Band started touring together again in 1988 and have just released their first studio album in more than 30 years. Siegel also has a newly released Chamber Blues album and a third album out that's a collaboration with some of his old pals. After nearly 40 years of performing, he's still touring around the world, taking creative risks, breaking down musical boundaries, and having fun every step of the way. <laughs> 